The history of Estonia and Tallinn was shaped by several different nations over the centuries, what can be easily explained by its important role as a trading point and central connection between the Nordics, Baltics, Early Europe and Russia. After the Danes, the Germans, the Swedish, the Germans again, a short time of peace, the Soviets, the Germans again, and the following occupation by the Soviet Russia, Estonia longed for freedom at long last. With the declaration of independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, a new art blossomed. Metal. With its picturesque medieval town center, churches, places and sites, Tallinn itself is known to be quite touristic. You can find smaller souvenir shops, vendors, handicraft and artists on every corner. However, a closer look behind the curtain reveals the transition that Tallinn is undergoing due to the events of the last eight years. Rotting and crumbling walls and backyards are soon to be renovated, and beautiful buildings and futuristic architecture add a certain ambivalence to the view. Several lost places like Linaho and Paterai Prison are closed for the public, waiting for investors to be rebuilt and reused as cultural hotspots. The mighty Linaho, formerly known as Lenin Palace of Culture and Sports, is a sleeping behemoth located near the harbor of Tallinn. After mailing the convention management of Tallinn, I could make an appointment with Marit, who was my guide at Lina Hall. So it's Lina Hall, the biggest concert venue uh, in Tallinn. At the moment it's uh, in a bit of state, but uh, once in a time it used to be grand and um, it was built for the uh, Olympics actually. So uh, in uh, 1980, when uh, part of the Moscow Olympics was uh, held in uh, Tallinn, they needed a bigger venue for people to come and enjoy cultural events. So they decided to build this place, which was um, called then uh, Lenin uh, Place for Culture and Sports, and later it was rena renamed as Linnaheim and uh, it was used for all sorts of events. I mean, you could have circus in here, next thing you'll find some Christian event, then uh, rock concerts, so all sorts of concerts were held here. And the last concert in this place was in uh, 2009, and since then it's been actually empty. I think uh, from the town's point of view, there's no really difference between any genres as such, but um, if you talk about stereotypes, yes, there are stereotypes that go with people who prefer to listen to heavy metal or metal music. But um, even that is, I think, disappearing now because um, I think uh, metal music, maybe in Estonia, was very, very popular maybe around 10 years ago. And then uh, it was almost as a wave after the country became independent. And uh, with that, I think a lot of the stereotypes were broken. That, um, yeah, I think uh, it's the loudness that a lot of people are minding, like, oh, it's very loud, 
some people say that maybe it's not music because it's just about loudness. But uh, as a city point of view, I don't think there's any difference whether we are holding a heavy metal concert or we're holding a jazz concert because uh, every music genre has their supporters and uh, heavy metal maybe supporters are just as large as uh, cl uh, classical music or uh, jazz music supporters. They tend to maybe be more younger as in your life you through, go through phases, you go through the heavy metal phase as well. A lot of young people find it very attractive because uh, it's very lively music often and that's appealing to younger people a lot. So I don't think there's really that much against that genre as such in Estonia. It's now really something um, maybe jazz-like, maybe a um, mix and mash of all the modern uh, music trends that are appearing and disappearing in the world. I mean, I would say that the biggest music festival maybe is the Tallinn Music Week, which is celebrating the more modern music in the world. From the traditional ones, it's obviously the Song and Dance Festival taking place every four years which is focusing on traditions and folk, music and dance. And then in between you'll have operas, you'll have um, musicals, so it really, really varies from door to door. Marit's opinion gave me a prevision that something here was quite different. Of course, like everywhere else, stereotypes also exist, but maybe in a much lesser marketness than in Germany. The city's support for extreme art seemed to be normal. And surprisingly enough, Lina Hall itself was a big part of it. The venue, yet obviously abandoned, still serves a higher purpose as the creative melting pot for the local metal scene. Death metal, black metal and even crossover bands share two actor rehearsal rooms as well as a fully functional studio that produce art in the catacombs of Lina Hall. If you search Estonia on Metal Archives, there are about 200 entries, and over 100 of the bands are from the capital. Sungehel, a quite new old-school black metal band, who also rehearses at Lina Hall, represent the next generation of metal heads in Estonia. We are next to Finland, next to Sweden, next to Norway. Is yeah, basically next to us. So you have like so many influences from outside and that, uh, in the Stern metal scene I think the main thing has always been the, this pagan vibe the pagan metal vibe because, uh, hey we are the most anti-christian country in the world the Stern metal scene in, in general is quite small so you have like every but, band but, but is unique, quite unique very unique so because we don't have like we have like three or four trash metal bands, proper trash metal bands. In Germany, for example, the trash metal is the one of the uh, main uh, g uh, genres. In Estonia, there are one band from that uh, from death metal, one band from that, from one band from gothic and etc. So like and they have one crime band. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Estonia started, uh, I think it was uh, 2012. Before that, there was everyone like, yeah, I listened black metal sitting at home or uh, didn't have any good concerts where to go. Um, me and Ingmar from uh, Ingmar from uh, Do uh, had this idea that. We wanted to have a place where all the all the metal black metal listeners would come together, have some ideas, do some bands, and we felt like we don't have this place, and we wanted to do this underground underground thing that that it's not the official club, 
It's just uh, it's just a place where we do our own stuff wherever wherever we want. And uh, and today it kind kind of works that way that uh, we wanted. But uh, Ingmar started other um, other things to do like uh, holes of winter and uh, the shell of death and the kind of me Tony uh, and Sander from the shell of death also uh, started uh, to build up this black magic community you can say and uh, today we have like 20 active uh, members who does uh, concerts bands and just chilling drinking beer there so I think it's working the way I want it and uh, imagine that uh, we will fight like uh, oh you do death metal like oh you suck and uh, oh. I don't wish you very well and yeah. uh, that's not thinkable because o all together we support anything it's metal like doom metal the stoner metal uh, here in Linna Hill um, now is uh, death metal uh, rehearsal rooms, but now we do there also Both rehearsals, metal, yeah. and I think it's very great that uh, may maybe in the 90s we had the same uh, same uh, attitude here a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. but not anymore. Yeah. We can't uh, allow it. So. Soon after the interview with Sungehe, I learned that Black Magic Estonia, which Kedi mentioned, was nothing less than the center of nearly every metal-related topic in Tallinn. After show place, meeting point of the local scene, and even a small concert venue. But beside the vicinity to Scandinavia, I wanted to know where they personally got their moves from. For you, was this Norway bands? Yeah, early days, yeah. Burgerhall, yeah. Dokka, and Tudor. But now it's bands like Bla uh, Blasphemy, Beherit, Arcoat, Black Witchery, Alter Rage, stuff like that. I think Most brutal stuff. I, I think uh, that the Estonian black metal like is uh, more a pagan, pagan thing and we wanted to do something different. And um, the influences from Norway, I think, mostly. For the early yeah. years of Singel, it was yeah, Taka and Shooter was the main bands, <laughs> but there are now and also some Finnish bands. <laughs> and for me, uh, when I was young, I started to go a uh, club uh, called Rockstars, and there met some new friends, friends like Kaido Havandi, and also listened to Tarapita, listened to Tarapita, and there started to this metal thing. Um, I thought, oh, this is the shit I like, and started to do bands and uh, go to the concerts and meet people, and that that went on like this. Uh, of course, hard rock lager. We used to have uh, another big festival called Rabarok, but uh, hard rock lager is the one in Estonia now. So we're hoping that uh, that Kaido keeps up the good work and. We still have this one metal festival because we don't <laughs> have anything else. Yeah. <laughs> That's how small Estonia actually is. We have and one big I metal festival. Yeah, and yeah, I think it's a, it's a good place where uh, younger people can get this uh, metal, uh, you know, interest. Uh, so, yep. <laughs> For me, it starts uh, in uh, Hard Rock Lager, Also. Yeah, also. Not only within this interview, another name kept popping up, Kaido Hawandi, who is not only the founder of Hard Rock Lager, but also the owner of Rock Club Tapper, and member of some of the oldest metal bands in Estonia, Tarapita, Manatak, Swords and Lloyds. Looking back like um, almost 20 years, um, it's strange to uh, pinpoint exactly where your stuff got started. <laughs> With me, it's it's kind of a strange thing because uh, in the end of 90s, I was uh, very much into one uh, online computer game, 
which was called MUMA, a multi-users in Middle Earth. And it's a mod type of a game, only text on the internet. And um, well, people talk there, uh, communicate, and I met one bloke from uh, Norway who was involved uh, with the black metal scene and also involved in uh, one festival that just got started back then, the Inferno Festival, which we basically all know today. And um, he introduced me uh, to uh, one guy from uh, uh, Borknar, uh, Jens. And um, well, next thing you know, Borknar is coming to Estonia, which happened to be uh, my then first organized black metal gig in Estonia. And at that point of time, there wasn't much happening. Uh, well, yeah, bands already had started coming to Estonia, but there wasn't um, really, uh, there hadn't been any black metal bands playing, um, especially from the Scandinavian scene. And uh, Borknagar happened. Uh, it turned out that Jens, the guitarist, uh, was also a tour manager for Mayhem uh, half a year later. Next thing you know, Mayhem is performing in Estonia, and I kind of um, got a good match with the guys because uh, I think they took me uh, for a promoter who provided them with all the stuff uh, and also helped out with some of the next gigs, uh, especially concerning the Russian border. So I think they stayed two days in Estonia and I, I had to help them with that. So that was kind of a start of a relationship and what do you know, a couple of years later my own band, one other, was performing at Inferno Festival. Q a couple of years forward, uh, we went on tour with Mayhem which was a great thing for any black, uh, up-and-coming black metal band and, uh, and especially a band from Estonia that no Estonian bands had been on a Nightliner tour before. A couple of years later, Impale Nazarene tour followed, so by the time the Estonian black metal scene um, got its stuff going and bands started visiting venues in, around Europe, uh, my own band Monadark was already an established band. So that's kind of one of the examples how from a silly computer game <laughs> and talking to the right people at the right time can give you a kind of a boost. Estonia is a tiny country. The scene for the underground is even tinier and um, everybody knows each other and uh, for instance uh, me and Arto uh, from uh, Lloyds, I think we go back over 20 years now already and uh, when I um, got into the band called Tarapita, uh, we shared a rehearsal room with uh, Lloyds and uh, did some recordings together and um, after, uh, I think after uh, Monadark uh, released its first cassette, uh, the first album so to speak, uh, the next thing you know we were on tour with uh, Monadark and Lloyds <coughs> together in the Baltic countries. It was called the Baltic Thunder Tour, and um, <laughs> it's funny how we performed. We had this PC computer, I think it was uh, 386, uh, that played uh, MIDI drums through a program called Cakewalk. So uh, we didn't have a drummer back then. We had the same computer on the stage, except the members <laughs> exchanged places and Monadark suddenly became Lloyd's and the other way around. Um, so yeah, we go back a long way and uh, when the Club Tapper started, uh, Otto was actually the first program manager for, uh, for the initial half a year. Uh, so he was very much involved in uh, getting the place started. And from there on, ever since we've been kind of um, <laughs> grey comrades or grey brothers, like not um, interacting each day, but every time we meet, we kind of feel this connection and the stuff we've done together and giving each other a boost in, uh, in our dealings in music. It's, um, it's really uh, <laughs> invaluable brotherhood that we, we've had over the years. Only knowing that Lloyds was quite a questionable, yet important Estonian band, there was not much to be found beside the interviews they gave once in a while. Dale Patterson, founder of Cult Never Dies, for example, has depicted Lloyds in his book, Black Metal Into the Abyss, while they also talked about their view on the accusations of the far left. The band pointed out they would have nothing in common with the NS ideology, and they only depict topics like their bond to nature, their people and country, as well as their grandfathers who fought to free Estonia from both Germany and Russia. So 
so yeah, if, um, if we're talking about Lloyds getting banned in Germany, it's, uh, I think it was one of the most obvious things to happen. Uh, is it justified? It's, it's a good question because uh, Germany, with its people and its laws, is always Germany. It's, it's never another country. And for these, uh, these kind of attitudes to prevail in Germany, there's certainly good historical reasons. There's, uh, there's, decades, of, uh, there's decades of reasons. Uh, would I hope that it would be the other way, that, uh, that things wouldn't be so extreme, so harsh? Of course I do. I mean, it's, it's a sad thing when things, get so, uh, when things get so extreme in the center of Europe that should be actually the, uh, the leading country in Europe with, uh, with you know, equal rights to everybody. But um, is that going to happen in my lifetime? I'm not sure. Am I hoping for it to happen? I'm not sure, <laughs> because there would need to be certain processes and it would, it would need to happen uh, um, naturally. And I hope I don't offend anybody when I would say that uh, um, I think uh, when a society goes to such extremes, like banning bans for slightest of reasons, then a society is a little bit traumatized and you can't really like, heal traumas just like that. It needs to happen. It's, it's a process and everybody needs to agree with that process. Uh, I think it's going to happen, maybe not in the nearest decades, but um, I think uh, we haven't seen the ugliest part of it yet. I'm afraid it's going to go to extremes. People are going to get hurt and whoever is a thug, no matter what the ideolo ideology is, that person is going to be seen as thug which is not necessarily the case at the moment. So, as a promoter uh, of uh, underground music, I am of course aware of different trends that are uh, underlying uh, the surface. And uh, some of them are political, some of them are vehemently anti-political. Um, I myself think that, uh, would like to think that uh, underground music, such as, as an art, uh, should stay, stay away from politics and so forth. But of course, there's, uh, that's an illusion. Everything is connected and, um, and sometimes you feel it very strongly when uh, some people ask you to promote a certain kind of show and some people uh, ask you not to do that for exactly the opposite reasons. So there's like a pro-something crowd, there's anti-something crowd and I would really like to steer clear of both of the, uh, the left and right extremes. Um, I think um, no matter what the ideology is, everybody who groups up and uh, tries to uh, promote their view through violence is basically a thug, because at least in this country it is perfectly, uh, uh, perfectly reasonable and, uh, and possible to promote your ideas without any violence, uh, to, uh, to put motions into work, to um, have a political career if you so wish. Um, I would like to steer clear of uh, the politics in music. Strangely enough, you still find yourself in a polarized word, world. Um, I think uh, some guys who are, uh, I would think that they're from the left side, I think. They actually have a, they have a name for people like me. And it was something like, uh, well basically it meant that it's a person in between who uh, communicates with both sides that you can't really point in any certain directions. I would like to think that is true, but I would also like to think that there is no kind of left and right side, you know, there's top and bottom, there's north, south, east, west, whatever, you know, there's 360 degrees to everything and I'm very much able to listen to every side, every, every side has its reasons, I'm perfectly capable of understanding these reasons and perhaps, you know, giving my input as far as politics or history is concerned. So um, coming back to the uh, original question or issue is that um, I'm pretty proud to say that uh, there is no real polarizing going on in the Estonian underground scene and people just get along even though they might be <laughs> pretty extreme at each other on the internet or whatever and people communicate, which is very goddamn important. When you, start, when you stop communicating, you're done. When uh, it's like 
I think it was Lemmy who said that when you're in uh, in the music business and you lose your sense of humor, you're, you're done. You can't really um, go on with all of that. So communication and good sense of humor in everything, even very pressing issues, I think is a must in the underground scene as well. The brotherhood between Kaido and Ahto, who accumulate their talent into bands like Manatak, Therapita, Souls and Lloyds, caught my interest. Lloyds might be the most controversial band in the Estonian scene, which I wanted to know more about. When you stop communicating, you're done. These words from Kaido matched my own view on this highly emotional topic, and to fully understand the history of Estonia, I followed an invitation from Seam to visit him at his workplace at the Royal Museum. What I learned there explained a lot about the past, especially about the role of the Germans in Estonia since the Middle Ages and during the First and Second World Wars. When Germany attacked Estonia, they treated Estonian people as Slavic subhumans, just like in the nearby countries. However, when the tides turned, the German Reich drafted and recruited Estonian soldiers, who were promised independence for their country if they helped defeat the Russians. The outcome of this war for the Estonian independence was the deportation of about 20,000 Estonians to Siberia and an over 40 year long occupation after the war. After my visit at the War Museum, due to the hospitality of the Tallinn representatives, I could arrange an interview there and meet Arta at this special place, where one can still feel the cold grip of the Soviet occupation in Tallinn. Paterai, a military complex that was actually built as a sea fortress in 1840 and then used as a barracks, turned into a prison for different regimes from 1920 to 2002. Patarai prison is now closed for the public. First I wanted to know how his musical career started and find out even more about the history of metal in Estonia. Not like all musicians, I started with school band. We started to play kind of Beastie Boys, <laughs> Nirvana covers maybe. And uh, then uh, there was jazz metal band and death metal band. And uh, then I joined my friends from other city playing uh, disease music one band. And then uh, very important for me, I joined to this group with Tris Crucial. Uh, it was slow doom death metal band, really good ones. I still listen a lot of these old demos and stuff. And uh, when this cruiser, uh, my main guy went to the army, serving the country, then uh, Tarapita grew up from this band. And those, those first Tarapita members were all these cruiser members. But, uh, uh, everyone is connected. Actually, in the um, middle of 90s, we, uh, we had a very good uh, death metal scene, but in the middle of 90s, the death metal scene collapsed. Well, almost like one day there was a good cool black metal, death metal scene, and another day there was nothing. And uh, then uh, the new scene well, uh, took it over. And uh, there was Tarpita, uh, Lloyd's, Monadark, Colm, and the new power metal scene rise then. But uh, black metal was already here. Before, before then, okay. Yeah, quite many bands. And, and uh, local protagonists were in contact with uh, Euronews and Varg and stuff like that. So, so there was not kind of fall of iron certain.
Just like other people before me, I wanted to address the elephant in the room and wanted to know the reason for the accusations of the far left. Uh, you asked it, uh, what about our uniforms and stuff like that. Of course we have explained it a lot everywhere. This is very nice, we can, we can talk about those things and, and this is makes Lois different from other bands, but then um, uh, it's just a historical story about our uh, great grandfathers and grandmothers who, who fight for uh, freedom. Especially in times of political correctness and also the right wing trying to influence art, the stance of Arto and his band must be hard to understand for the people not familiar with the topic. Of course, after incidents with festivals like Blastfest or bands like Marduk, Destroy 666 or Magua, which were also the topic in the Tallinn scene, I wanted to get his opinion on this as well. Today, the Antifa have gone too far. I think all those organizations who go so extreme, they will collapse sooner or later, I think. And now they have opportunity to blast because all this uh, political situation is uh, somehow on their side. <laughs> but when I see uh, where the things have come, then just read about uh, this Marduk stuff. <laughs> and I, don't, I think all black metal bands get involved with this Antifa thing. Sooner or later. Okay, you understand uh, the problem with bands who stay in grey area or something like that, but if you are really uh, clearly uh, national socialistic, then it's I think it's, it's a, this fight is okay. <laughs> uh, this is normal. Uh, you are extreme. Uh, you will be treated extreme as an extreme band. So I think uh, there is no point of whining or something like that. We had a uh, kind of incident with uh, the groups years ago. Uh, we played in the same festival and, and, and somehow they were host to tell him that we have an ex extreme band and we have kind of views <laughs> and uh, they at first refused to play in the same festival and uh, when they they start to know the Lloyds and uh, examined Lloyds they said okay let's do it that one band must be, be, be between us and everything went very well. And they bought lots of albums and desserts, and we get we were very friendly. After all the information, backgrounds, and stories, I wanted to get an idea about the current metal scene. Two days before the Halls of Winter Festival, which was about to take place at Kaido's Rock Club Tepper, I visited Ingmar from Thaushal of Death, an organizer of the event, in their rehearsal room, preparing for their own gig at the club. Actually, everybody were to talking that the uh, Estonian black metal scene is dead, and it was like uh, 10 years ago or something. As I told, uh, no events were happening and uh, stuff like that. But uh, it's, uh, you know, the thing is that you cannot make the scene happen. Uh, there has to be some kind of crash, and uh, then it has to, uh, the room for growing. And I think uh, at the moment we are somewhere where there are coming new bands, and all these bands are still young. But uh, all the bands have, I have sight there that all, everybody has kind of future in in the scene. So it's like growing. To have a, it seems to have a just a perfect spot to grow. Uh, in Tallinn, in Tartu, in Pärn, the, everywhere there is pretty pretty good support for black metal and there is uh, not too much events and concerts where uh, there is uh, not 
too few people or there's al always there's people who are interested i in it so. there is not much people but there is a small and loyal scene that is all, all always at location so when you invite some bands you know that these guys come there it's growing actually we got our our own uh, trash metal club also but yeah the new bands are coming so I think, uh, I think it's uh, it could be for every uh, genre there is because uh, there is a really a day after day that there becomes more opportunities for youngsters and uh, older guys to play and find some band members and uh, to socialize uh, through music so it, it, every music genre is growing all the time and and it's good for everything. It's good there, for metal. There, it's good for pop. It's good for everything. There has been opinion. some kind of separation mm. between the mm. genres. Before there was just mm. a metal scene, and you had uh, death metal, black metal, and uh, heavy metal at one event, and everybody came there. <coughs> but now we we have some kind of separation between scenes. There are death metal concerts, black metal concerts, and thrash metal concerts, and that maybe makes it more like uh, unique for people uh, that uh, they. They come to the concert not because of just drinking and see some boring band that doesn't mean anything to them. So that may be the good thing. And uh, there are so much younger bands coming uh, on the stage at this event. So, unlike the German scene, the Estonian scene seems to be just fine and on the rise. It should be even more obvious later on. But still, without having listened to much original Estonian metal. The question if there is a typical Estonian metal sound was still unanswered. Through the time when all the different countries occupied uh, our land, so th this folklore, folklore music is uh, mixed with, uh, let's say, British folklore, uh, Swedish folklore, so it's, uh, in my opinion, we don't have this kind of uh, our own sound. And yes, you probably never have like uh, you listen to the new band and you cannot say that that's it, Estonian. You don't have that effect. So. Actually, I have organized black metal events before, for ten years, for the moment. Uh, when I started to organize it was because of the economic crisis, probably, and uh, there were no black metal events uh, happening here, so I wanted to organize some e events where I can go m by myself and uh, I don't know, it, this uh, solved kind of natural way there ha started to happen more events so organizing smaller events didn't uh, wasn't I anything new or so important for me so I concentrated on one event and started to organize Halls of Winter and first year it was like uh, just a show where I wanted to invite bands that are not uh, in usual black metal scene. I wanted to bring some atmospheric post and uh, kind of different black metal bands. But after first year there was quite big interest and uh, next year happened that it was two days. Quite accidental because I couldn't book one band, uh, two bands on the same day. And then there was quite big interest from outside Estonia and it just started to grow in its natural way. And now we are here. Beside Hard Rock Lager, the Rock Club Tepper is one of the most important venues in Tallinn and maybe in the whole Estonia and located at the outskirts of Tallinn, where concerts and indoor festivals are held. The Halso Winter Festival, which took place in early February, was the synopsis of the whole Tallinn experience. Everyone I spoke to during the week was there to celebrate the event and was somehow involved. Sunghel and members of Black Magic Estonia took their reserved place, while Kaido, as the owner of the club, helped out at the mixing table and joined Ahto and Swords on the stage later on. This only added to the feeling that everyone knows everyone and the bands, venues and organizers heavily depend on each other.
the music scene got close together, and instead of competing, like in Germany, the support is strong and vibrant. Supposedly, the saddest part was that the foreign or even the Scandinavian bands playing there couldn't tell a lot about the scene in Estonia. After being asked about the Estonian bands, there was mostly silence. Of course, one could tell that after the big crisis in 2000 and the new success of metal music in Estonia, there were all the problems on the rise that art has to face when money gets involved. One can only hope that the scene in Estonia keeps its spirit, as at this point it seems to be the long lost ideal I always wish to experience in Germany. In the end, I got this strong feeling that I only scratched the surface and this short journey was certainly not my last time in Tallinn in Estonia. <laughs>